How's it going trainers and welcome to another Pokemon Go video. Today we're going to be going over the Team Rocket team leader bosses as well as Giovanni and dive into their teams and the best counters you could use against each. So let's go ahead and start with Cliff. Cliff's lead Pokemon will always be Meowth. His second could be any combination of Sand Slash, Flygon, or Snorlax. And his third could be any combination of Torterra, Infernape, and Tyranitar. So what you're going to really want to do is try to line up um, effectiveness. For example, let's say Meowth, Snorlax, Tyranitar, they're all weak to fighting types. That would be great. But let's go ahead and just look at them individually, if that would be easier. So For Meowth, you're going to want to use fighting types, preferably with fast fighting type charge moves, such as Counter Power Up Punch, Lucario, or Counter Legacy Cross Chop Machamp. However, Counter Dynamic Punch Machamp will work just fine too. It kind of goes even. Uh, going on to the second, we'll note right away that if the second Pokemon is Snorlax, you're going to want to double up on one of these fighting types. If not, Sand Slash and Flygon can both be drowned by water types like Waterfall, Hydro Pump, Kyogre, or Mudshot, Muddy Water. Yes, Muddy Water. Swampert in this example. And I'll actually show you exactly why with a video example for Muddy Water Swampert. It's actually really cool. Going on to the third, if the third Pokemon is Tyranitar, you're going to want to double up on a fighting type yet again. However, if it is Torterra or Infernape, for Torterra, you're going to want to use Mamoswine to deal with that grass ground typing. Both are weak to ice types. And if it is Infernape, then Togekiss actually does just fantastic against it as well as Torterra. So, Air Slash Aerial Ace on Togekiss will get the job done. Let's go ahead and look at one of my encounters with Cliff so you can see why certain things work. So, of course, he's going to lead with a Meow. We're going to lead with a counter dynamic punch of a champ, and as you can see, we're kind of going down an even rate. If we were at cross chop, if it was legacy, we would have already gotten to it. But I'm going to save this dynamic punch, knowing he's coming in with the sand slash, switching to Swampert. And look how fast that muddy water comes. Now, the purpose of this is it comes so fast with the mudshot damage that we're going to burn through both of his shields, because yes, these leaders will block both. So we get to two before he even gets to his first charge move. So there goes Cliff's both of his shields. And now, all we gotta do is shield once after we get this third Muddy Water off. And I am gonna note that Muddy Water isn't gonna do much damage, but that is actually kind of important to what you're trying to do. We're gonna go through this, we're gonna get to our fourth Muddy Water before it gets to a charge move. So note, we took two shields and hit with two Muddy Waters, and he's in the yellow. We're going for that fifth Muddy Water, and guess what? We got it. Gotta be four charge move from Sand Slash. This is really, really important. It's really critical you use Muddy Water instead of Hydro Cannon. So he's gonna, he's gonna have this charge move, we are gonna shield it. What we wanna do now is finish it off with fast moves. Not the Muddy Water. Oh wait, we go for our sixth Muddy Water. But I think we charged a little bit over, so we should already have our seventh ready. He's gonna come in with Torterra. We're gonna switch to our Pillow Swine. And the reason why we want all those Muddy Waters is because we kinda wanna farm down so we could have our switch, if necessary, ready to go. So we're gonna hit that Avalanche and pretty much wreck it. And that is going to be that scenario. So let's go ahead and move on to Sierra. Sierra's lead Pokemon will always be Sneasel. Uh, any combination in the second could be Lapras, Hypno, or Sableye. And in the third, it could be any combination of Houndoom, Alakazam, or Gardevoir. I will note that this is actually a slightly, slightly trickier than Cliff. It kind of goes from Cliff as the easiest, Sierra kind of in the middle, and I would say Arlo's the hardest. But let's go ahead and look at the counters. So first things first for Sneasel. Uh, again, just like Meowth, spammy charge moves from fighting types will work great. Counter Power Up, Power Punch Lucario again, Counter Cross Chup, Machamp, or notably Bullet Punch X Scissor Scizor. X Scissor comes so fast, and it, yes, it's super effective against dark types. Uh, next up, Lapras, Hypno, Sableye. Uh, Hypno and Sableye don't really stand much of a chance against Darkrai with Snarl, Dark Pulse, or even Titar with Bite Crunch, although I will say Darkrai is definitely a little, a slight bit tankier. Uh, if it's Lapras, simply bring Melmetal. Melmetal is amazing against all the Team Rocket leaders. It's Thundershock fast move, builds up Rock Slide like you would not believe, and Rock is super effective against Lapras's Ice Typing. Otherwise, moving on to the third slot, Houndoom, Alakazam, and Gardevoir. Metagross's Steel Typing resists Alakazam and Gardevoir while dealing massive damage with its legacy move, Meteor Mash. 
and simply if it's Houndoom, bring Swampert. In this case, you're going to want Mudshot Hydro Cannon. It's pretty critical that you have the harder hitting Hydro Cannon in this example. So let's go ahead and look at some gameplay again. So of course she's going to leave with a Sneasel, we're going to leave with a Counter Dynamic Punch Machamp. And this is going to go pretty even again, just like Meowth from Cliff. We're going to get to a Dynamic Punch, we are hopefully not going to use it. We're going to shield this move. This critical Ice Punch comes so fast, we do not want to use Dynamic Punch. And she's going to come in with a Sableye, we are ready to switch to Gardevoir with Charm. Charm is very important. As you can see, it's just ripping through Sableye, but because of how glassy Gardevoir is, it's ripping through us. We're gonna let Sableye finish us. That's fine. And we're gonna come and get a little bit more energy on our Machamp. Hopefully anticipating that it is Houndoom, and it is, so we're gonna go for these Diamond Punches and try to get as many shields away as we can. We do have our Swampert in the back, or maybe Kyogre. I can't remember which one I used. Dynamic Punch taking that second shield trying to go as fast as we can get to that third dynamic punch and we do that's going to do super effective damage against this dark type houndoom and we did not even need the third pokemon it's really critical you get the lead in the second pokemon matchup right moving on we're going to take a look at arlo definitely the most difficult of the three he leads with a scyther which is surprisingly good his second can be crobat um, gyarados or magnezone and his third can be charizard Dragonite and Scizor. What I would like to note is you can see there's tons of flying Pokemon. There's just Scyther, Crobat, Gyarados, Charizard, Dragonite. Rock is crucial in this matchup. Let's go ahead and take a look. Of course his lead Pokemon Scyther uh, is a bug flying type, so he has a two times weakness to rock types. Um, Melmetal, I honestly gotta say, feels like the best thing against Scyther. Thundershot gets to rock slide ridiculously, you'll see it in the next video. And it just fires away, rips through shields, and does great super effective damage. All the while, the steel type resisting damage that's coming at it. If you don't have that, you could use Rock Throw Rock Blast Golem. That will do just fine as well. The second Pokemon can be Gyarados, Magnezone, or Crobat. Gyarados and Crobat share an extreme weakness to electric types. Um, such as Thundershock, Thunderbolt, Zapdos, or Thundershock, Wild Charge, Raikou will do great. If it's Magnezone, Bring Garchomp. Garchomp resists everything Magnezone has, and it's fantastic. Uh, as far as the third, we're basically going to have to play it off of whatever he has. If it's Charizard, we're going to want to use Regirock with Lock On and Stone Edge. If it's Scizor, use Charizard with Fire Spin Blast Burn. And if it's Dragonite, use Dialga with Dragon Breath Draco Meteor. So let's go ahead and see what I chose to use. So starting things off with his dreaded Scyther, we're going to use our Melmetal, and we're going to show you just why this is such a good Pokemon. Its Thundershock is going to build a Rock Slide in about 4 seconds. We're going to get to that first Rock Slide, taking the first shield from Team Leader Arlo. You can see that he's causing a decent amount of damage against us, but that's okay, because there goes... Oh, he got to his charge move, we're going to give up a shield. But as you can note, we're about to take his second shield at being half health, therefore we should be able to get to two more Rock Slides that will hit. So here we go, we're going for that third as fast as we can. Here it comes. Bam, right into the red. Thundershock him away, get to a fourth rock slide, just like I said, just before death. <clears throat> we actually charged a tad bit over as well. And Scyther is out of here and he has no shields and we still have one. Trying to get to that fifth rock slide to land one a good scroll bat, and we do. It's important to have a good mail metal. If you have bad IVs in your mail metal, you won't be able to do that, but I have good IVs. We almost get to that sixth, and we actually bought Golem to back us up. I did know the I went ahead and went through this to see what Pokemon he had first, so it's a pretty good idea to do that. We're gonna get to our Rock Blast. That's gonna land, not quite killing, but doing enough. We're still in the green, and what does he got for us? He's got Scizor. We're gonna get to another Rock Blast just before death just to get some uh, peck damage in there. And we have Entei in the back, ready and waiting. Yes, Entei might be even better than Charizard, if not the second best. I kind of like Charizard better because Blast Burn comes so fast. But here we go, we did not even need the second charge move. It's critical that you look at what they have beforehand if you want to have a perfect setup. So let's move on to Giovanni. Uh, I would actually find Arlo harder than him, but 
go ahead and let's talk about it. Persian is going to be his front Pokemon every time, and his second slot can be Doug Trio, Rhydon, or Hippowdon, and the third will always be Shadow Articuno. Uh, pretty exploitable weaknesses, a normal, a ground type, ice type. Let's go ahead and look at our best counters. With Persian, spammy charge moves yet again to burn shields with fighting types are going to be the preferred method. Counter Power Punch Lucario, Counter Legacy Cross Chop uh, Machamp, and honestly I don't think Dynamic Punch could do the trick with this Persian. Persian is pretty good. And I actually really like Thundershock, Rock Slide, Melmetal in this matchup. <clears throat> For Dugtrio, Rhydon, Hippowdon, Drown him with Water. Waterfall, Hydro Pump, Kyogre, or Mudshot, Hydro Cannon. Uh, Swampert. And I really find that Hydro Cannon Swampert is excellent against this, and you're going to see why. For Articuno, it has a 2 times weakness to Rock, so Smackdown Stone Edge Tyranitar or Lock On Stone Edge um, Reggie Rock will do just fine. And yeah, let's go ahead and look at my video example. Now, we're going to lead with our Metal ma Metal, metal oh my gosh, into his Persian. And you're going to see that these rock slides come so fast. We're going to burn through his shields. He's doing a decent amount of damage. He's already gone through a little over a quarter of our health. But what's really exploitable with these leader bosses, they have a bit of a delay after you fire a charge move against them. And they don't really attack. So we're going to get to our second rock slide just after he starts attacking again. If you notice, there goes a second shield. And he's not attacking there. We're almost to a rock slide. We've taken both of his shields. We have another rock slide coming. This will land. Boom, get him to half health, trying to get to that fourth rock slide. Can't quite get to it. But he did his job. We're gonna come in with Swamper and we'll shield whatever comes at us. We're almost to the Hydro Cannon. Here comes a charge move. We are gonna shield it. Hydro Cannon comes just as fast as Rock Slide on Melmetal. So here it comes. Almost finishing off the Persian, and the delay allows us to fast move it away while getting some energy for our next Hydro Cannon. He's coming in with a ground type no matter what, so we had the Hydro Can ready and waiting. He has no shields, he's down to half health. 3, 2, 1, another Hydro Cannon. <clears throat> Goodbye, right on. Next up on the plate, we know we have Articuno, that's what's great. We know we have it, we're building up to a Hydro Cannon. At this point, we just want to do as much chip damage as we want, and we want to save our last shield for our Rock type in the back, no matter what. Just save your last shield. Here comes another Hydro Cannon. We've gotten to two, I think, against this Articuno. Doing just chip damage. Doesn't do super effective, but chip damage is chip damage. We'll take it. We almost got to the third, but here we go with our Smackdown Tyranitar. We will shield whatever comes at us, or we'll just get straight to our Stone Edge and finish off this Articuno and beat Team Rocket Boss Giovanni. There you go guys, I hope this helps. I really recommend that you go ahead and look at their teams beforehand and build it up based off what they have. Thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.